Hey what is up guys, welcome back to another Minecraft Java video. Today we're going to be taking a look at iris shaders and I'm going to show you guys the best settings to use with iris shaders to be able to get more FPS in your game. So these are going to be the best FPS settings to use when you guys are using iris shaders and you are using shaders in your Minecraft Java game. I am on the latest release of Minecraft Java which is 1.17.1 and I am running iris shaders at the moment. I am also using some shaders as well so let me go into my options and show you guys. I am using the Silders Vibrant Shaders version 1.29. These are the extreme volumetric edition of the shaders and they do run quite well. These shaders are actually quite nice looking and they can be demanding at times because they are the highest setting, the highest profile of the Silders Vibrant Shaders. So we're going to try these shaders out and we're going to see what kind of settings we can tweak in our game to get more FPS when using Iris shaders. So let me go ahead and go to my options and let me disable the VSync to begin with. I'm also going to change the max frame rate and make that unlimited so we can actually see the highest possible value of FPS I can get. I am running Fraps because when we do use the in-game console the FPS actually drops. So if you guys are using the in-game console to see your FPS, chances are it's not going to give you the true value of your FPS. So I'm going to actually use Fraps instead. So as you guys can see on the top right corner of my screen there, it is showing me that I am getting close to 140 FPS on average there as you guys can see. We're going to go into our options now and we're going to start with the tweaks and see what things we can change to be able to increase that figure so we're going to try and achieve something higher than 140 fps now if you guys are running lower end pcs or lower end laptops chances are that you might be getting even less than the fps that i am showing you guys today so hopefully with the tweaks and settings that i am going to show you for iris shaders then you guys would be able to get slightly more fps and you would be able to run the higher demanding shaders like silders or Seuss renewed for example okay let's go into our options now and click on video settings just to make you guys aware that these settings are actually part of the sodium mod because iris shaders does actually come with sodium which is a really good performance based mod so if you guys are using iris shaders then you will notice that these settings actually look different to your normal minecraft game and the buttons are different textured and they look slightly different so these are in fact the sodium settings that we are going to be changing if you do use iris shaders without sodium then some of these settings are the same however some other settings like if we go into quality and especially the advanced section these are part of sodium so essentially we are going to be changing most of the sodium settings to try and give us more boost in our game so i have actually left everything as the default just to show you guys if you were to install iris shaders by default what settings you would get so we're now going to change these settings in iris shaders to try and get even more fps okay so one of the main things that is going to affect our fps in our game is the render distance as you guys can see the performance impact is actually set to high this is one of the major things that will affect affect our FPS in our game. So if you guys are on a lower end PC or you're not getting high enough FPS, I would highly recommend to turn down the render distance and the amount I like to play on is normally 8 but you guys can actually change that to 6. So anywhere between 6 to 8 I think is a safe value to play on and you don't lose out on being able to see further ahead and you do get good performance. So let's actually go ahead and change that to 6 to try and see how much FPS we are going to get. Okay so with the new and the latest release of Sodium which is 0.3.2 they have added this section here which is the shadow render distance now again if you guys are on a low end pc then i'll just switch that and turn it down all the way to zero obviously you can turn it up and increase it and see what kind of fps you get but for this example i'm going to change that to zero and see how that affects our game all right for the rest of the stuff we can actually leave it as it is i would recommend to turn off vsync because it is going to be fixed to your monitor's refresh rate so if you guys are on a 60 hertz panel you're only going to be able to see 60 fps so make sure that vsync is unticked again the max frame rate by default is set to 150 change that slider all the way to 260 and that is actually the unlimited setting over here so if you change the slider you will see it say 260 and that is the unlimited setting so these are the changes i would make in the general section now let's go into the quality section of the iris shaders and sodium settings in the quality section immediately i would turn down the graphics i would change it to fast 
these are the two options you can change so you can either select fast or fancy i'll change that to fast and the good thing about using iris shaders with sodium is that it does tell you the performance impact so you guys can see that graphics is a high performance impact for the clouds we can leave them i always like to play with cloud setter off because i don't really look at the clouds that much to be honest but you guys can decide you can see it does say performance impact low but for the purpose of this test we're going to change that to off weather quality we're going to change that to fast because that is the lowest we can choose particle quality again that is a medium performance impact and the lowest setting we can change is minimal so if you change that to minimal that is the lowest we can go for the smooth lighting we can see the performance impact is low but for the purpose of this test i'm just going to change that and set it to off the biome blend again i'm going to move the slider down and change that to zero entity distance is set to 100 i'm going to change that to 50 because that is the lowest we can change i'm going to untick the checkboxes for entity shadows and vignette and also change the mip map levels to a zero as well so essentially what i've done is i've gone ahead and changed everything to the lowest possible setting in the quality section all right so let's move on to the advanced section now in the advanced section i would actually recommend that you leave everything tick because these options are actually going to help you get more fps so we do have some culling options here and we do have the other options here that are going to help us get more fps in our game so if you just leave them exactly as they are you can change the chunk memory allocator and the max pre-rendered frames but to be honest i haven't noticed much of a difference in fps by changing these figures so i have actually left them as the default so i would recommend just leaving everything in the advanced section as it is if you guys are on a machine which has lower opengl compared to 4.4 so if anything is lower than opengl 4.4 then chances are that you won't be able to select the persistent mapping so just keep that in mind all the other stuff you can go ahead and see how it works for you you can obviously untick them and see if you do get any changes in your game but i would personally recommend that you do keep them enabled because they are there to help us get more fps if we go to the shader pack section obviously there's nothing here that we can change the only thing we can change here is to select the shaders that we're going to use so now that we have actually changed all of our settings we've kept the advanced as it is we've changed the quality to all the lowest possible settings here and we've changed the settings in the general section as well i'm going to click on apply over here and it's going to reload the internal options there i'm going to click on close and now if i click on done and go back into my game we can see that i am now getting 280 fps that is a major difference in fps that i was getting so as you guys recall i was getting 140 fps before but now just by doing those tweaks and turning everything down i am getting close to 290 fps as you guys can see in the top right corner of my screen there i have got fraps showing me 290 fps and when i am playing the game i am able to play the game now with really nice fps if you guys do find that you are getting heavier lag spikes where the fps is fluctuating even more than it should you can just go back into video settings and then enable vsync and that should keep you at a constant fps setting based on your monitor refresh rate if you guys are on a lower end machine and you do find that your fps is actually higher than 60 and you are getting some nice fps and you do want to increase your settings slightly to make the game look even more better then you can go ahead the first thing you can try and do is actually change your shadow distance here so as you recall we changed the max shadow render distance to zero so let's go ahead and change that to a six and see how that works out so now that we are playing we can see that we are able to see constant shadows whereas before if they were set to zero they were popping as we got closer to the object which looked a bit weird but we were getting high fps so you guys can see now i am getting 220 fps whereas before with that setting turned down i was getting 280 fps so it is a trade-off if you guys are getting high fps in your game you can start to increase some of the graphical settings in the iris and sodium settings to see if they help out and actually you are able to maintain a constant 60 fps in your game hopefully you guys have found this video useful if you have please do give us a like if you have any comments or queries about how to increase and change your fps in your minecraft java edition game 1.17.1 while using iris shaders and sodium do leave them in the comment section below and also please do subscribe to the channel to help support to help it grow and i'll see you guys next time thank you for watching